Good day, everyone. This is a continuation of the discussions for the practice exercises found in your modules. Specifically, this video concerns on the third operation on the module lesson number three of unit number three, which is concerned on operations on fractions. Specifically, we are going to talk about multiplication of fractions. In the previous two videos, we were able to add and subtract fractions. We actually used the rules, uh, guiding principles, and the processes and pro properties that were actually applicable for addition and subtraction of integers. Because then again, I would like to remind everyone, even if we are dealing with fractions, we need to always go back to how we add, subtract, multi uh, multiply, and divide integers. Similar to this video, we may be using the rules of science of the addition of multiplications of integers. But first, let me share to you the screen containing the practice exercise C. Again, our concern for this, this video is on practice exercise C on multiplications of fractions. So we are not going to talk about the content here. We are going to jump immediately on practice exercise C as the purpose of this video. So we have four numbers. Uh, they're here for the multiplication of fractions. So let us go to another window. I'm going to share to you the screen of the paint application software wherein the items are already placed here. So let us try to label Muna so that they will have pop up. We will not have any problem later. One, two, three, and four. What is just nice when we talk about multiplication of fraction, and even consequently, uh, I mean, to the next uh, type of operation which is division, just the reverse operation of multiplication, is that we don't actually need to make our fractions similar. Okay, we don't need for our fractions. We don't need to make our fractions similar because if we deal with fractions with we, multiplication of fractions, we simply multiply the numerator to the numerator and denominator to denominator. As for the first number, let us try to use number one. We have here three fifths times negative seven fifths. To multiply fractions, you simply follow the straight or direct linear multiplication. You multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators to denominators. In short, our answer here would be the product of three times seven for the numerator and the product of five times five for the denominator, okay? So again, even if we're dealing with fractions, look at what happened in the numerator and denominator. They are both processes that involve operations on integers, specifically multiplication on integers. So to make this, uh, to Continue this uh, problem. You have three times negative seven. You multiply two integers with different signs. So you expect that your answer is negative 21 over five times five, which is 25. The rules in presentations of uh, answers or results pertaining on fractions will still be followed. Number one, this is already in fraction form. No need to express this in terms of numbers with decimal notation. Number two, yes, we are just lucky that this is a type of improper, uh, proper fractions, I mean. But if our answer later on is an improper fraction, do not convert it to make a mixed fraction. Stay improper. And finally, we need to make our fractions into our need to, uh, yes, make our fractions into a simplified form. In this case, we cannot divide and we cannot simplify anymore 21 and 25. This is our final answer. For number two, okay, number two is we have negative one sixth times negative three fourths. Same thing earlier. We multiply numerators to numerators, denominators to denominators. So for number two, you may have negative one times negative three all over six times four. Negative one times negative three is positive three. Six times four is 24. Again, no need to give answers in decimal notation. But what we can do here better is to simplify this. We all know that 
denominator 24 is just a product of 3 times 8. Why do we uh, use a 3 times 8? Because it will help us simplify this. Okay? Now, what do you think is, uh, is the numerator now? Because we already used the cancellation law for multiplication, uh, which actually canceled out the numerator. Okay, this the one possible problem here, one possible mistake, in is an assumption that when we cancel out everything, the answer, the the remaining number here is zero. No, because the cancellation law talks about cancellation law for multiplication. In in short, the what will remain on a numerator or denominator when everything is cancelled out is the factor that will be multi when multiplied to the numerator or the denominator, it will not change the value. In this case, we all know that three is three times one. In short, when we cancelled out three, we left here one. So our final answer is one eight. This is the answer when we when we simplified further the item number two. There are two different processes that may involve here. This one is a longer method, wherein you still multiplied, and then after you multiply the numerators to numerators and the denominators to denominators, you see later on if it can be simplified and you further simplify. That's a longer method correct and acceptable. The second possible method for number two is to just simply use the cancellation law for multiplication immediately, such as if we have one six, and then you have negative three fourths. Okay. What can be canceled here is the number three and the number six here. We can use cancellation law to cancel out three and six. If we're going to cancel out three here again, same as earlier, we uh, we left uh, we uh, we still have one here. On the denominator, it's not one because we uh, six is not just and three are not, are not equal. We all know that six is a product of three times two. So when you cancel out three, we still have two here. So since no more can be simplified, we proceed now to multiplication of numerator to numerator and denominator to denominator. So negative one times negative three is a positive one. Ah, sorry, negative one times negative one is a positive one, and two times four is positive eight. As you can see, we have the same answer when we, we use the longer method and the shorter method. Now, as to what is required in our class, it is up to you. As long as you simply process, in, uh, you simply follow the important processes when you multiply fractions. Again, in mathematics, there's no need to rush. So you could do the longer method if you want. And if you're very comfortable with the shorter method, you may do it as well. Number three. Number three is seven halves times negative two. Okay? We could express negative two, same as practice exercise A and B, as an integer, as a, uh, as an, uh, fraction, as a fraction. Negative 2 is already an integer. We can express negative 2 as a fraction of denominator 1. In short, we can actually rewritten this as 7 halves, 7 halves times negative 2 over 1. Okay. And then we could just use, again, the cancellation law because we have 2 here and 2 there, leaving 1, leaving 1. So 7 times negative 1 will result to negative 7. 1 times 1, answer is 1. Okay? So again, what that is what that, what that is uh, that is what happened because we actually canceled out 2. But this is not your final answer. Yes, it is a form of a fraction, but we need to make our answers in simplified form. We all know that any number over 1 is the number itself. Just like how we transformed negative 2 as negative 2 over 1, our final answer should be just simply negative 7. No need to place over 1 here because it automatically means the number itself. Okay? Now, as for number 4, we have your negative 3 times 4 fifths. Same as number 3 here. We could express the negative 3 as a fraction with denominator 1, and we have 4 fifths. Since we cannot cancel any numbers here, proceed immediately with multiplying numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator, 
And then we have negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. 1 times 5, 5. So the answer is negative 12 fifths. Again, we can make, uh, we can place the negative here in three different ways. Number one, we can place in the numerator. We can place here in the denominator, or we can even place it in between, in between the numerator and denominator, in the middle. And then no need for this to be, to be simplified because that's already simplified and no need for it to be converted into a number with decimal notation. So this is the discussion made for practice exercise C of lesson three, operations and fractions. We will have our last video next time, which will be concerned on division of fractions. That's all for this video. Hopefully you've learned. Use this video as part of your review. Goodbye and thank you.